So welcome back my Julies. Obviously we're doing something a little bit different today. We actually have someone we're going to be interviewing slash having a conversation with. And our special guest today is going to be Skywalker the Jedi, who is the leader of Sell the Snyderverse to Netflix, as well as the founder of the hashtag. So welcome Skywalker. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so grateful and excited to be here and have these conversations with you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm just all here to talk about sale. Uh, it's, it's been a long journey and uh, we're just here to kind of narrate what's been going on and to see if uh, e e you guys will rock out with what's been going on. So for sure. Awesome. Um, so you've been in many articles that you were nice enough to send us, but could you give just for people who aren't familiar with the sell the Snyderverse movement, just a quick, like what you think are the highlights of the movement and how you've gotten this far? Absolutely. Um, yes. Uh, you know, uh, obviously being a part of release the Snyder cut and restore the Snyderverse, right. Uh, when, we found out that Henry Cavill was no longer going to be Superman anymore. It was a very like, you know, dreadful day, right? Uh, it was a day of mourning for the greater Zack Snyder fan base. And, uh, yo, I was just as taken aback and shocked and saddened as everybody else was. So, um, when we were all at that point and I was kind of looking around, um, I saw that not only my community, uh, that I'm a part of being like the seal nation and all that stuff. Uh, but it was just a great, just, I saw it, everybody, it was all this anger and sadness and frustration being shown online. And, um, I just started racking my brain and honestly, I was trying to find something to just spark, uh, some positivity in my little online section of the internet. Right. Or my little pocket rather. And, um, we end up just kind of having some conversations, um, myself and some other people that they weren't aware, but I was kind of bouncing the idea off of them. Right. But they didn't know that it was going to be a hashtag or anything, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, on January 3rd, I put out the hashtag, uh, sales ZSJL to Netflix and my good friend, my right hand, Leon of, the new geeks so coined the uh, sale Snyderverse to Netflix and uh, yeah it trended within like I well, I said it around 10 o'clock p.m. Pacific time and I woke up at 6 a.m. And, and it was already trending so um That's pretty much yeah and within a couple days we had already gotten an article in Forbes and so uh we obviously kind of saw that this was quickly taking on a life of its own. And uh, we just had to make sure that we were kind of steering things in the right way and making sure that we've been keeping the conversation strictly about uh, getting a conclusion to Zack Snyder's DC arc uh, and getting that done on Netflix. So uh, that's been our true North. And uh, we've just been finding ways of keeping the fan base uh, energized and galvanized for a little over a year now. Mm -hmm. And we've had a lot of great results to show for it. So. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I know for me, Henry Cavill is Superman. I think it's something special. Um, can you Absolutely. talk a little bit about how you feel about that and maybe about why you think it is such a divisive, uh, casting? Man, um, Cavill as Superman is something like my mom loves Cavill as Superman. Like you have no, like you know, she's a bigger yeah. fan of Cavill as Superman than I am, right? Like she's seen DSJL more times than I have. These are facts. Like these are <laughs> stone cold facts, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, <clears throat> um, it's a very iconic casting, man. Henry Cavill embodies Superman. Uh, on and off camera, he looks just like him um, when you see him. And honestly, I think it was uh, Man of Steel, man, like that film. Because uh, even myself, uh, I was always much more of a Batman fan growing up. 
obviously I like Superman, but you know, it was harder for me to relate to him, right? And um, I think that Man of Steel really changed that for a lot of people, myself included, and it turned me it turned me into a huge Superman fan. So uh, I think that, you know, that casting is iconic and I don't think that the fans are uh, ever going to um, not want to see him get a conclusion to these films. Yeah, it's so funny that you say that. I remember coming out of seeing uh, Man of Steel and the feeling I came away with, I was with one of my best friends when we saw it and we were just like, wow, the first half of that film feels like this beautiful art house origin story. Mm. And the second half is like this powerful, like major stakes, like what happens when gods come to earth. And it was the first time, you know, watching kind of like Iron Man that had been coming out um, in that type of superhero film, where mm -hmm. regardless of what they wanted to do, you can't save everybody. And that that was going to be the tone, that the consequences of these superpower beings coming to earth. Absolutely. Right. And um, it absolutely gave you that feel. I think that that's why Zach was focusing in so much on um, the characters from the Daily Planet. Right. While you're seeing these things happen, because uh, it was it was making it real. And I was just rewatching that film. And um, when Lawrence Fishburne grabs her hand. Yeah. Right. Right. When they think that everything is about to end. Um, it's just. It's such a powerful scene, and you don't get that without the stakes being there, right? So um, I think that even when you look at Man of Steel, uh, the real-life response kind of mirrored these films, right? Like, BBS was about the world reacting pretty much to the third act of Man of Steel, right? Because just like in real life, you, you had people that was like, yo... Uh, what was he supposed to do? You know, like, he just turned into Superman. Zod is like a trained military leader who is becoming more powerful by the minute. And he's already said that, hey, this ain't gonna stop unless you or I die, right? So um, you have that going on. And then you have people saying like, oh, but what about all the collateral damage? And he should have been saving people, right? So these movies really mirrored like and then i think that that was what was so special about them is that uh they it, it really put these heroes in a real life situation and i think that that's why it resonated with so many people the way that it did yeah i think that's actually like the perfect way of saying that and also why do you think that a lot of people try and say that Man of Steel and Henry Cavill Superman is doesn't give them hope and that Superman is supposed to embody hope because personally well, I feel like he's like the most, most hopeful yeah most hopeful <laughs> yeah, absolutely right um I think that with Man of Steel you have uh, a few things that was going on one is that uh people really are used to the whole boy scout image right and I think that what Man of Steel showed is that if you place a Boy Scout, even in modern times, things would be more gray, right? And it it isn't just black and white, right? Um, you have the um, scene with um, with Pa Kent pretty much saying, hey, uh, I don't know if you should have let them kids die or not, right? So it's like real real stakes here going on. So um, I think that when you have a character like uh, Henry Cavill Superman that is placed into a reality-based situation and they still choose hope at the end of the day, I think that because it was hope in modern times and not that classical kind of interpretation of hope of, of him yeah. like saving cats out of trees or <laughs> you know helping an old lady cross the street um i think that that is why there seems to be uh this kind of um split amongst the fans right but it's just it's, yeah. hey it's literally in the movies like it's really what was happening that's why zach is the goat in my opinion like it's like yeah. <laughs> it, well, it's I, pretty crazy I think you're absolutely right. It's in the movie. They actually have between Jarrell and whatnot say that that's the stakes. And uh, 
with Jonathan Kent, like the, what are they going to be the ramifications when humanity finds out they're not alone in the universe and that, you know, Clark's the answer to that. So I kind of like you're saying, I always took more hope from seeing that it's easy to have someone who is without flaw, but to see someone with unlimited mm-hmm. power show restraint is almost more powerful than just mm-hmm. have it be no temptation, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Right. It's just like, uh, that was the question that was bugging Lex in BBS, right? He's like, if God is all good, you can't yes. be all powerful. And like, it's, yes. it's, yo, it's all there in the film, Joe. So, um, I I really do think that um, these uh, these kind of deeper themes and uh, subtones that are going on, I think that's why these films have really, really resonated and why people are still discussing them right i mean yes. man of steel came out 11 years ago right and we're still here to, yo and it's still being broken down i'm still catching stuff right and so uh yeah i don't think that anybody can actually deny that uh these films have been pretty impactful and i think they show so yeah we're also big marvel i mean we're big all everything kind of nerdy fans yeah. you know Absolutely. and uh you look at, I, I've always felt that Man of Steel came like a decade too early and that if it was released right. now after the kind of the Marvel pendulum has swung, that people mm-hmm. would be like, wow, we're ready for it because I feel like Marvel went the other way. They, they, the stakes are lower. Everything's nicely wound up. You never doubt that everything's going to be okay. Absolutely. And Man of Steel and the Snyderverse are just completely the opposite of that but i think (laughs) marvel's actually paying a little bit of the consequences of not being able to convince you that anybody's ever truly in danger yeah right and uh yo i i was a huge mcu fan uh i had pretty much gone to the like just like with the dc films i would go buy a brand new t-shirt every time that one of the movies and was coming out and i'm there with my popcorn right so i was totally all in but uh yeah i would also say that even if you look to marvel right um a lot of their better films like objectively have been the ones with more stakes and the, the yeah. darker or more serious tones from um i mean even the first iron man had some moments but i can point to uh winter soldier civil war infinity war which had a super dark ending right um in game these were films that took themselves more seriously and i think that they resonated more with fans because of it right um when people are not uh so sure that all of the heroes will be able to make it out um then i think it just adds to that level uh of excitement and unpredictability that audiences have been uh, is, is so looking for it these past few years. Absolutely. Yeah, and I feel like it actually adds more of like an emotional connection. Um, mm-hmm. Especially because when we've talked to fans now, when they've said they've rewatched Man of Steel, they're like, oh, I actually yeah. realize I appreciate it so much more now mm-hmm. because I'm not a, like comparing it to some of the other things or my expectations. I'm actually just watching it for what it is. Yeah, right. I mean, one, you have the people that have grown and they're at different points in their life now. And a lot of those themes can resonate more with them. Um, but also I would add, um, that if you really go back and compare like what was coming out at that time, um, I think that, you know, Zach has kind of always been ahead of the game, right. With Watchmen that, that came out, um a, a few years too early right so uh that is really something that has been um a trope of his right but uh i also think that level of unpredictability right um when you guys went to go see bbs right did you like look because i knew doomsday was in the film but did you guys expect superman to die at the end of that film like no, no right? like way. none of us did. None of us did. Like, and I know about, you know, the whole death of Superman arc and all that. And I still 
was like, they're not going to kill Superman in the second <laughs> movie. <laughs> right? there, there's no way. But when it happened, I was shocked. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, I think it just added to that overall level of stakes. Like, yo, anybody is on the table. Yeah. Right. Um, for these things happening. So, uh, yeah, it, it's just very exciting when done well. Yeah. Yes. Um, so kind of back on to the Snyderverse to Netflix. What made you put the dots together that it would be Netflix? Mm, man, good question. A uh, few things. Uh, one, uh, I have a great relationship with uh, a guy who's a bit of a scooper named Sil Abdul. And he gave me a bit of a, because I knew, like, maybe, a few, I want to say maybe a week, but it was really around maybe like four days. I, I, I knew about four days early about the whole Henry Cavill being fired. Oh, right. Okay. And no, no, I absolutely knew. And when he was telling us, like, I, I almost didn't want to accept it. Yeah. Right. But um, I think that with me having a little bit more time to process it than everybody else did, because he came up and he, he was like, yo, like, I'm not joking. It's over. Like, he's out. And so um, with me having to respect that knowledge, that it was really done at Warner Brothers, I was like, yo, um, I have to start trying to think about any other way that this could be. And I was like, well, where would it make the most sense to end up at? And I was looking at the other studios, like, you know, I mean, Paramount, Universal, all that stuff. And this uh, little thing clicked. And I was like, wait, Zach's at Netflix now. And then I started thinking like, Okay, it came out on HBO Max, so the first one came out on the streaming service anyway. So it so it it really shouldn't be a big thing. I'm getting a sequel on a streaming service, I'm like, uh, most of the main cast has has already worked with Netflix and has a prior relationship there. I'm like, uh, they aren't theatrical, so it wouldn't be like a competing thing with warner brothers right it could totally stand on its own i'm like and you know warner brothers can really just keep going and really do whatever they want and those films can be judged on their own merits so uh it was really like a multi-pronged thing but all the signs were just pointing towards netflix and, and i was like if they uh like if they can't facilitate this then who else can like because they're the biggest streamer and it just it just made the most sense on so many levels and so uh yeah that really is what kind of led to the whole netflix thing it's amazing you say that because uh but when south cali guy you know recommended we get in touch with you um we didn't know that there were other people. The south cali guy huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't realize that there were other people kind of looking for where this could end up. And we had just kind of been thinking ourselves and we had put out like a video talking about Zack Snyder, you know, kind of what you said, um, already being affiliated with Netflix. It was right after he came out and said that he'd be interested if they bought the rights. And we made that video yes. and immediately the negative response, you just kind of dismantled every one of those arguments. Um, <laughs> because people <laughs> Netflix doesn't have the money. Well, Netflix just spent like five billion dollars on uh, wrestling. the wrestling, you know. And so yeah. we always joke that yeah. uh, people say they don't have money. They also, they also bought um, a old army base up in New Jersey that they're turning into a studio. What? Really? Right? Yes. So, okay. like, no. And I'm like, hey, like, you guys don't think that they would want to shoot something in this brand new studio that they're creating? You know what I'm saying? Like this uh, big, huge state-of-the-art thing? Yes, I mean, there was just, there is several reasons why this could happen. And once Forbes agreed with us so early on, because they had written two articles on us within one week or, no, no, or about nine days of, this hashtag being out. So their second article, which was one of the ones that I sent to you guys, was uh, showing that this was surprisingly the best option. 
And I'm like, yo, because it's literally, uh, it, it satisfies Zach's fan base. It satisfies Netflix's, their books, uh, Warner Brothers. They get to move on. Uh, James Gunn's get to have um, his own thing going on. So I just really do think that uh, this is the best way for this thing to be able to be settled. And the fans aren't going to stop asking for it. This has been something that, I mean, we were asking for the, the, the Snyder Cut for years before that thing came to fruition. And I don't think that anybody's going to stop asking for a conclusion to these stories. So I think it'd be best for all parties if uh, cooler heads prevailed and we could just get a conclusion to these stories. Which, yeah. thank you so much for saying us those articles. And the Forbes one really, I feel like, was eye-opening for us because it was like being in like the zeitgeist of having that knowledge, knowing those things, having those conversations. Because once we saw that article and Scott Stuber from Netflix saying that, yeah, if Warner Brothers would get, sell them the rights, he would be more than happy to buy them, that they want to continue with Zack Snyder because every time they have more Zack Snyder movies, it's better for Netflix, it's better for the fans. And reading that, I was like, dude, that is what we've been saying this entire time, that there is no reason that Warner Brothers wouldn't want to do it mm -hmm. because it's beneficial for everyone all around. The, uh... Absolutely. Okay. Yo, uh, that was actually the second time that Zach said that he was willing to, to do it, right? Because I asked him at full circle. I asked him a question in front of the whole world, and... It, it's on camera, right? And I straight up was like, hey, you know, would you be willing to do this on a third party? And Zach said, yeah. So we've known for quite some time that Zach was interested. Um, I had prior or prior knowledge that Netflix was interested and that was shown to be true. So I really do feel great about our chances of being able to get this Absolutely. done. Absolutely. Um, well, another great thing that between the articles you sent and the interviews you did, um, was kind of the the talk of how it would fit with the DCU because we feel very strongly that this is not a competition thing. Yeah. We try to always say whenever we talk about the Snyderverse that we are not saying we don't want the DCU to have it. We're not saying we want James Gunn to fail. You know, we'll report when things seem odd coming out of Warner Brothers regarding the DCU, but we absolutely, absolutely want to see a good Superman legacy. And we would never want fans to kind of go through what we're going through, hoping, getting your hopes up and not getting it. Could you maybe talk on that weird dynamic a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, James Gunn has a fan base. I think that he's shown that with uh, his Guardians of the Galaxy movies, right? And there are, um, there, there are a lot of people that really enjoy what he does. And I would never try to say that... Um, any other creative um, should have a project like not yeah. exist or taken away from them or what have you, right? Um, you know, that was one of the things that from the beginning I wanted to kind of highlight with this campaign, which is why, uh, well, one of the, the things that's made us so successful is that we've had rules of engagement, like while we're on social media. Uh, rule number one, we've always asked that people be positive because um, we've been having this conversation with Netflix and, you know, they've been great with Zach. Zach seems very happy there. Um, us as a campaign, uh, we've had nothing but positive interactions with them since we've been in, in kind of driving this thing. And so we just didn't really feel that it was necessary to carry over any of that animosity that any of the fans may have had from stuff that went on prior. Right. So um, rule number two, we ask that people do that they don't mix the hashtags because Twitter slash X only respects two hashtags per tweet. And we've trying to um, keep the messaging as focused and effective as possible. Um, our hashtags had a very, very positive approval rating when we first started this thing. That was one of the reasons why we wanted mm, to kind of isolate our conversation and keep that, you know, kind of going that way. And lastly, uh, we've asked that people don't really uh, tag James Gunn or anybody else that works for WBB in our tweets um, for, for this campaign because uh, we're trying to have this conversation with Netflix, right? So 
Um, I think that with us isolating ourselves and totally just focusing in uh, on Netflix and trying to have that conversation with them, uh, it has led to us having massive results in a little over a year. I mean, um, I think that I can pretty much say uh, I have reason to believe that the reason why a lot of this DC animated stuff has ended up on Netflix was because of our campaign. The reason why the DCEU on Netflix has been because of our campaign. And um, when ZSJL goes over to Netflix, that will be because of our campaign as well. So uh, I think that us operating this way has been very paramount in our success and allowing space for WB and DC Studios to have their DCU and have that be judged on its own merits, I think is the most important thing. That's actually such a great point because uh, in addition to all the other kind of stars line you talked about earlier with uh, Netflix, yeah, you now have all the the Justice League films, you know, from Man of Steel going there. That I don't, you know, not only do I not think that's coincidence, but if I'm Netflix, I'm absolutely looking at those numbers, watching, you know, people get those views and thinking, this is great market research to, you know, as a proof of concept that we should move forward. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. That was one of the things that my good friend Mikey made. He rest in peace that he was always sharing. He was like, Hey, uh, when you see Zach's movie start popping up, just know that they're talking. <laughs> and I was like, all right, all right. And then, um, yeah, like I believe, um, yeah, the announce and the oh man, it's just th there's been so many of these like little moments that have come that have let us know that we're on the right path, and um, all those movies ending up on Netflix, I think, is one of the most major things. But um, just know that we're also feeling very great about our chances of getting. Batman vs Superman Ultimate Edition and Zack Snyder's Justice League onto that platform as well. We believe that they're coming to us, awesome. so, <laughs> for sure. I'll say also, I know South Kali, I was letting us know yesterday that there was talks about uh, the Justice Zack Snyder's Justice League movie actually going to theaters and getting a theatrical release. Man, yeah, um, being at Full Circle um, and being able to um experience Zack Snyder's Justice League in IMAX was something that uh was very 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 special to me and I wish that every fan of that film would be able to have that same experience so uh if it is released in IMAX it will be something obviously that I am going to champion and that I'm going to make sure that uh everybody can kind of flock out and experience um but yeah, uh, seeing it in IMAX, like in person uh, at a full circle with Ben Affleck there and Ray Porter and Zach and everybody, it was it was something that can never be duplicated for me. Um, but I do also know that uh, all of the Z fan base, they do deserve that same chance. Um, not to not to sound negative, um but I remember watching Zack Snyder's Justice League. And I mean, one, it's longer. So it has, it feels like it's given the time mm -hmm. it needs to tell that story. Um, when it shifted to Joss Whedon's, what do you think happened with the vision that it came out? Man. So, I mean, I'm not trying to be negative, but. <laughs> oh, no, it's all good. You know, because when you said that you weren't trying to be negative and you started out with the Snyder cut, I was like, where is he going? And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. Josh Whedon, okay. <laughs> Josh, uh, yo, um, I really do think that there was an attempt to, um, if I'm going to be frank, I think that, you know, Zach has spoken about this. He, he had openly said that he was one of the only people that was saying like, hey, we shouldn't be trying to copy Marvel. Um, I think that there was a lot of pressure from the executives there to copy the Marvel formula, uh, which, you know, I can understand um, doing the whole cinematic universe thing and trying to copy that. But that does not mean you have to copy their formula uh, or anything like that. You can have your own cinematic universe and it still be different 
right? But um, I think that there was a chance to copy the Marvel formula. And I think that if you look at the tone of a lot of the movies post um, Josh Whedon's Justice League, it kind of also showed that they were trying to lighten things up and it was a lot more jokes. And uh, yeah, Batman cracking one-liners was definitely something that I didn't expect going into <laughs> going into going into Justice League. Um but you know, luckily I kind of knew from the jump that it wasn't Zach's movie. Um from from the very first frame of seeing Henry Cavill's face, I automatically knew that uh, all of the rumors were true about them redoing the movie in five months. I mean that's crazy, right? The and, scene when yeah. um the scene when Aquaman's sitting on the lasso of truth, it just screamed to me like, "Let's be, let's be Marvel. Let's let's <laughs> undercut that moment of tense, like kind of coming to God emotion yeah. with a joke." And I was like, "Oh, dude, what?" Yeah. Nah, <laughs> didn't fit, didn't fit. And uh, yo, that yeah, that movie is egregious in hindsight. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so crazy, but um. I honestly do think that, you know, one, the version of Zack Snyder's to Justice League that we got was not going to be what we were going to get in theaters. It was going to be around three and a half hours. So it was a bit shorter, right? But um, I think it still would have had, like, that impact that it had, you know, when it eventually was put out, right? But, um yeah, it's just the executives there. Um, I think that it was just really, I mean, it was all about bonuses and getting some extra money for the end of the year and all that. And it was just really a situation that I think, um, you know, in my opinion, I think it is one of the most significant mistakes in Hollywood history. Probably the most. Like, it's caused, the like, the mishandling of that film has caused such a ripple effect throughout entertainment as a whole. And I think that uh, it can very much be used as a case study of what not to do going forward. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Katie always jokes that uh, Warner Brothers is just the worst run studio in Hollywood by far. Right, and, and it's crazy because they were one of the best, right? When you saw that logo, you knew that it was going to be a quality movie. They have such a rich, rich history there, and it's just crazy to see how far they've uh, fallen in, like, you know, 10 years. Well, it, it really is. One of the narratives you hear people say who don't believe that the Justice League will be sold to Netflix or the license to it is, why would Warner Brothers do that? To which we often say, look at how it's running. They may not have a choice. Like, their share price is at an all-time low. Um, David Zaslav is known for gutting corporations. Nothing they're doing seems right. <laughs> especially indicative of a successful company. And on top of that, they do everything right. surrounding around money. So they're willing to shelve fully finished projects yeah. for tax write-offs. So why wouldn't they take a project that they're not using and actually just license it to someone else to get the money that they don't have to produce? <laughs> right. And... They're also licensing other projects uh, to other streamers as well, yeah. right? Like they got um, the Kate Crusader thing over mm -hmm. on Amazon. People always say, oh, but they're not going to have competing. It's like, is that going to compete? Because Warner Brothers is going to still do animation for DC stuff, right? So why is that not competition, right? I mean, you know, uh, they were openly shopping um, the the... The, what's his name? The J.J. Abrams Superman. Yeah. Was that not gonna be? Was that not gonna be competition? Right? Like, why does it only seem to be competition when we're speaking about this yeah. one specific project? Right? And and hey, um, and my other answer to that would be this: um, if this film and or universe was so much competition, why are we here in the first place? Why couldn't we just yeah. get? Uh, get the ending right. Uh, if it was gonna make so <laughs> much money and be such a big splash, yeah. right? Like, why are we here? And we could have just got a last run, right, with a 
Man of Steel movie, a Batman movie, and a Justice League wrap up, and then it could have led right into the reboot, and we all would have been happy. So uh, there definitely was a way that we can all win, and I think that this is the last way for us to all win. I think it's uh, crucial to healing the fan base for DC because one of my big concerns mm. is I don't think James Gunn's universe can succeed with this split fan base. Because for as many of us that want both to succeed, there are people who've taken it deeply personally that they do view the attack on the Snyderverse as like, we just don't care about what representation of Superman you want to see in the Justice League that you want to see. And in my mind, if you don't want those people to like say, hey, well, I'm not, I'm not going to go see it until I get a Snyder cut, you know, release or a finalization of the Snyder's uh, vision, like you're going to have a split fan base. And I don't know how with the way comic book movies are trending in Hollywood, how you would want to go into a new cinematic universe with, I would say at least half your fan base, very disappointed at the way the last, you know, franchise ended. You know, I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, There is no way that I see this ending any other way or kind of ending well, any other way unless there is um a moment of catharsis where we can get what we've been asking for um look it used to be in hollywood something just had to make a bunch of money right um you know you know the quality didn't really matter right i mean people have been complaining about transformers movies forever they were like hey why they keep making transformers because they make a billion dollars, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> right? That's why, right? So um, when you look at a situation like with BBS, right, where it was taken out of uh, out of China early, you know, it was pulled while it was still making money, uh, that film more than likely would have hit one billion, right? And with it dominating home video sales and all the that movie was very, very profitable. Uh, Greg Silverman, uh, the producer, even spoke to how profitable that all of Zach's films yes. were um, under the DC banner, right? So um, it, these projects were making money, and they were making more money, and it was kind of ramping up. And to have the rug snatched out, right? Like, I always say, Imagine they would have done that to the first Avengers movie, right? Where you have all these films leading up and then all of a sudden uh, they snatch Joss Whedon's film from him, reshoot it in five months, put it out, and it's some dark brooding movie that's nothing like any of the other films, right? And everybody's like, wait, what the hell is this? Like, why is it? You know, like, like, why is, um, why is my Iron Man having a drinking problem, right? Like, why is all this stuff going on, right? Um, but yeah, like, it would have been the same thing if that would have happened, right? So, th- um, I, I think that with, uh, these stories that have resonated so, and like, I, I literally just have these kind of moments uh, sometimes where I'll be having a conversation with somebody and and I'm just like, yo, I almost feel like I'm chosen to be hearing these things. I was having a conversation with my friend's um, child's mother just at a random party and she's just, and she started telling me how the Snyder Cut saved her life. Right? And she's telling me like, yo, it just hit at such this crazy time and um, everything that um it was talking about and just the themes and everything um it just really did so much for me and so to be able to be having these types of conversations and to have people tell me that these films resonate with them to that type of level um i think that when you have something like that going on you must respect it and the fan base is not going to move on Because it's beyond just the Zack Snyder fans now. It's the general audience fans. I've heard way too many people saying like, yo, like what's up with Cavill being, Cavill being back in Black Adam and having that promise that he was going to be back in all those movies soon. Yeah. Mm. If you, if you look at the hype level for 
DC overall at that point versus when it was said that he wasn't going to be Superman anymore. I think those are night and day comparisons. That's uh, such a, a good point because I wanted to talk about, um, not to sound conspiratorial, but it <laughs> almost seems like there was an attempt to sabotage like Black Adam because it wasn't released overseas. Um, it wasn't really given a chance to make the kind of money that you would have expected it to. Um, also, it, like kind of like you mentioned with Batman vs. Superman, it has dominated um, DVD sales. Like... Um, and it still made $400 million even yeah. without the overseas market, which is where a lot of movies make most of their money. Yeah. Absolutely. See, I like this because we get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, I felt like Black Adam was absolutely sabotaged. Um, I feel like that wasn't the only film that was sabotaged either. Uh, I, I feel like The Flash was as well. Um, and there was something that was that kind of um, kind of paralleled with those two films, uh, because in the lead up to Black Adam coming out, of course, because I had the friends that I have, like I knew Henry Cavill was going to be in the film, mm -hmm. and my good friend Sil Abdul, he was absolutely he was actually the one who scooped that and was like, yeah, he described the whole scene like over well over a month before the film came out so and i knew that that scene was going to be there and he's like yo it's literally like the man of steel suit right and everything and i was expecting like everybody to be happy and to be rejoicing right that henry cavill was back at, at superman right but instead you started to see that online there was this divide and people being upset that it wasn't the black suit or that you know his hair was gonna have a curl in it it was just all these little things and i was like yo right then it drops it's like hey well uh, it's like a it's the john williams theme with like a little bit of the uh han zimmer right and they're like oh well it's the wrong music and it's people and I was just seeing, like, I was like, hey, like, are these people actually fans? I'm like, I don't understand how <laughs> we could have Henry Cavill back. Yeah. This is Zack Snyder's Superman. Like, mm -hmm. like, hey, like, this is, and I, and I distinctly recall I was on a stream and I was telling everybody, I was like, hey, guys, you don't think it's going to be a bad look if Zack Superman is in a movie? And it flops. Like I was like, "Hey, like, you, like, you guys can't see what's kind of going on." So, um, Black Adam came out, and you know, the incoming DC Studios head like never said anything, never promoted the film. I was like, "Oh, that, that's weird." I was like, "Why wouldn't you kind of mention the film that's in theaters right now?" I'm like, you know, but hey, whatever, right? Um, and, and so, just seeing that there was like this strange behavior amongst the fan base, um, the fan base uh, with the, the, the Cavill thing, it just seemed odd. And then that was turned up to 11 with the flash. And uh, cause I was just, I, I just kept hearing like, Hey, like, you know, it's going to disrespect Zach's universe and this and that. And it's going to, uh, it's going to end this timeline and just all these crazy things. And I went to go see the film. I got in on the first of like the early screenings. Mm -hmm. And I remember coming out and telling everybody, I was like, Hey guys, like this film doesn't do any of that. Like I, I'm not going to speak to the quality of the film, but these things that you're saying that it does, yeah. it doesn't do. Right. So I'm not saying that it's the best movie ever. Like it, it's a it's a cool movie. I like a whole lot of stuff about it. I have some problems with it, right? Yeah. But I was just saying, like, to say that it disrespects Zach timeline or that it's good. To, I'm like, yo, this movie was actually paying homage to the Snyderverse in a whole lot of ways, and it was clearly based upon Zack Snyder's Justice League because there's several moments that mm -hmm. they were discussing um, the scenes that only happened in that film. 
-hmm. So I was once again seeing some of these fans saying, hey, don't go see it. It's going to it's gonna ish all over Zach and whoop doo doo whoop And they were like editing clips to make it look like Ezra Miller's uh, flash was putting a baby in a microwave. And I was like, wait a minute. Like, are these, like, wait, like, are these fans? I was like, yo, this is wild. And so it's just, yeah. I, then I had kind of noticed that, you know, there was some nefarious stuff going on. And um, we've just kind of, once again, this is why we've isolated our conversation and really been trying to do our own thing because uh, when you start getting into some of the stuff that's happened, uh, it can be, you know, the it's it's a tangled web we weave, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think, oh, go ahead. Uh, no, I was going to say, speaking of fans, why do you think that anytime someone posts about the Snyderverse or wanting it to be continued or even really just talking about it, there's like this overwhelming like influx of comments that are sometimes very negative that well they're personal it's yeah. not even you'll be called like a snyder cultist and uh again we don't do like politics on the channel but it is almost like a weirdly political thing you know i've heard people say that snyder's a far-right extremist i've heard <laughs> and it's he's so a, he's a marxist yeah, yeah. <laughs> which you really can't be both, but it's almost like whatever fits hating on yeah. him. And like we personally had people who will click on our videos and not even watch the video, but comment ahead of time and like with like laughing faces, like it's never going to happen. Um, <laughs> and we've also gotten like, uh, if Zack Snyder is able to make his Snyderverse, it'll ruin DC. Fans will never, they'll say fans will never yeah. come back to DC or, or just the, the typical, which is just people just saying, fuck Zack Snyder. Yeah. You know? Right. right. Oh, oh man. I, I have seen it, heard it all. Yo. Uh, and it's funny that you guys say that because if you look, they usually call the Zack Snyder fans toxic, right? It's like, yes. I thought we were the toxic ones, right? It's like, it's, it's like you, you, you know, uh, but, you know, as you guys said, um, I uh, I posted a video the other day of me hyping up the recent trending event that we had um, on the 14th of February. And some guy said, uh, you're a celebrity, bro. Like, nobody cares about these videos you keep putting out. And then I went and I looked at his profile and I'm like, why are you following me, though? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you following me if he's going to do this? But, no, um, I think that these things happen because, look, Zack Snyder, uh, as a fan base, uh, you, you know, um, during the peak of the release, the Snyder Cut, if you looked at Twitter, the biggest things on Twitter was like Elon Musk, Donald Trump, and release the Snyder Cut. <laughs> <laughs> right? Literally, like it was yeah. like the three biggest things on Twitter, right? And so when you have a movement that is that big, right, you're going to have people that are trying to insert themselves, trying to usurp, trying to psyop, trying to use tactics, trying to, you know, really, I mean, um, it got outed pretty much recently that there was somebody uh, who um i won't say who but was accused of um of hiring people to be on online bashing people trying to make them feel bad right like they they're literally trying to make people feel bad about supporting zach snyder's films right so uh i i think that you know because I know you guys, his name is Hold My Dual Shock, right? And I'm a little bit of an Xbox guy, right? But <laughs> I'll say this. Whenever I'm playing a video game and I'm lost and I can't figure out where I'm going, whenever I see bad guys and enemies start popping up, that's the way that I should be going, right? So wherever you're facing the most resistance, I say that is the right direction for you to be going in and... Uh, that's what we've kind of tried to keep as our focus. It's funny that you say that because that's kind of like the inspiration for our name is, you know, you know, we're into all these things that are just nerd kind of related. 
and you just see what's Absolutely. going on in the fandom right now, it makes you want to be like, hold my beer, but it's like, hold my DualShock. Uh, <laughs> and kind of like you touched on, people will say, like, you're not famous. Like, I'm not trying to be famous. I'm just trying to meet other people and have a conversation. I think it's kind of weird yeah. that that narrative is in their head when yeah. it's just yeah. the best part of the fandom is meeting other fans. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, um, yo, I, you know, I was in the military right um doing this this uh Zack Snyder cell movement you know it's been the hardest thing i've ever been a part of like honestly i had no idea uh you, you, you know uh the, the, there was actually a moment very briefly early on where uh we even ceded power to the people with these hashtags it's it's on camera it's still there mm-hmm. i during a stream was like hey we're just going to release them and we're going to let you guys rock out and everybody just rock out and use them. But then what ended up happening was very quickly after that, right? We saw that there's people trying to like bully people out of trending days. And it was just like all this crazy stuff going on and people couldn't, uh, they couldn't really agree on what hashtags to use. And it was everybody trying to change the hashtags and I was just like wait like hold on hold on hold on hold on right so uh we kind of were like thrust into this thing right so um if there would have been anybody else that would have really come up with the same I idea I would have grabbed my pom-poms and shared them on <laughs> just as hard um but unfortunately uh it was us and so it's had to be like this but uh yeah this is definitely something that, you know, like, you know, I even would say I didn't go into this thing with the intention of like meeting Zack Snyder or anything. Like I was saying that honestly and openly, um, I did get to meet him, but it, but in my belief, I think it was because I didn't start this thing setting out the meeting. Like, like it, it, it was really about this mission and, uh, getting a closure to these stories from my very first video on YouTube, that's what I've been here trying to do. So uh, y'all can check my credentials if y'all don't believe. <laughs> no, but like uh, what you've, what you've uh, done is like testament to itself. Um, yeah. I think for me, the Snyder Cut getting released is like this amazing moment in like fan lore almost that, yes. that and it's such a positive thing. I you cried. Know? The fact that in the fan base, I've always felt that like it's the fans that kind of keep the stories going. The reason Star Wars is still relevant 60 years later is because they we just never stop talking about it. And that's kind of what's going oral on with tradition. the Snyder Cut. Yeah, it's oral tradition. Yeah. And so it seems like there's this period where kind of about the time you're talking about where the studios were used to dictating what they were going to make. But now we've got the ability to use hashtags and Twitter to say, we really, really would spend a lot of money if you would just make this make this thing. Right. And there was always that weird pushback, but eventually the dam breaks, they do it. And like you said, like being in tears, just like, oh, you know, you can yeah. actively, you know, speak together to get these things yeah. to happen. And influence yeah. things. Yeah. And look, I've, I have said this to multiple people. Um, we changed the world with release the Snyder Cut. I'm going to tell you guys why. I cannot think of another time that any multi-billion dollar corporation was dead set on not doing something. Like, they were dead set, yo, y'all not getting this damn Snyder Cut. It don't exist. Stop, Stop talking about it, right? Go away. Yeah. We're not talking to y'all. It don't. It, it's it's not real. You're selfish, right? Uh, yeah. I saw one. It, it says Zach needs to cut the bullshit. I really remember somebody saying that on camera, right? <laughs> um, all these things were being said, and you look back in hindsight, it was a hundred percent coming from the studio, right? Like that was the narrative that they wanted out there was that this thing was not real, uh, and anything that was going to placate uh, that narrative, they wanted it out there. So um, I, I challenge anybody to look at a time where a multi-billion dollar corporation was like dead set on doing something and fought it like this. I mean, with this kind of situation, 
and uh, a whole and a group of fans got together and banded across the world mm -hmm. and uh, really made this happen. And so I can't think of another time that that um, has happened. And so I really do believe that that hashtag, it changed the world. And so um, we're just trying to give our own little uh, effort in making sure that the world gets a conclusion to these stories because I think it's so much needed. And when you guys watch this back and you hear that story that I was telling when you guys yeah. popped out, you're going to see why. Because, like, no, like, this thing really resonates with people. It really does. And um, I think that at this point, it's too big to stop. Yeah. So um, that was another question we want to ask you, because obviously you're far more, um, you just, you have this knowledge of this kind of movement. One of the criticisms we also hear is people say, nobody wants this. That it's like, they make it sound like it's like five people on the internet who actually want. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's not my experience. I see, you know, just in our little channel, hundreds of people, which is a huge sample size, you know, proportional to the, like, how many people do you think are behind this? Because obviously there was the HBO petition and I would say it's probably grown since then. Oh yeah. No, um, no, there are so many Zack Snyder fans around the world, yo. Um, thousands, millions, yo, look, Rebel Moon would not have been the number one movie in the world yeah. if not for the impact of, of this fan base, right? Um, I think that when you, when you look at the money that they were making uh, with his films when he was over at DC, you look at the engagement that he's been able to drive. Um, anybody, look, what's funny is on one hand, they'll say, hey, it's like 40 people and they're all using burner accounts yeah. and all that. Stuff. <laughs> but then on the other hand, they'll say, hey, the Snyder fans is why our movies keep flopping, right? Because yeah. they don't want to, they don't want to come support, right? They don't want to support DC. They only Zach fans, they ain't DC fans. It's like, wait a minute, which one is it? Is it that we're this a uh, group of 40 people with no power, right? That nobody should take seriously. Or is it that we're this big monstrous entity that has the power to, um, to have all of your films flop? It cannot be both at the same time. It has to be one or the other. So I definitely think that, um, that, that both of those things cannot be true at the same time. And, but yeah, it can't be both. You can't be this super villain, but also be like the most incompetent, you know, befuddled group of people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can't be Lex Luthor and Calendar Man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, like it has to be one of the, or no, Condiment King. There's an even better one for you, right? It's like, yeah. you, you, you really can't be both. I think as well, something you touched on um, that really resonates with what we feel is this weird kind of almost like insurgency into the fandom that you see on Twitter, because, you know, our whole thing is we like to joke. We like that kind of like being at work, the water cooler, you know, we love watching movies. We think are bad because even a bad movie, we can have a great time talking about, you know, Absolutely. I think it's always a little bit weird when someone says you shouldn't go see this film. And kind of like you <laughs> talked about, like with the Zack Snyder stuff, people be like, Oh, you shouldn't on one hand, people are saying like, you shouldn't go see it because it's more Zack Snyder trash. And then on another forum, they're saying you shouldn't go see it because it disrespects Zack Snyder's vision. And it's like, why is the only narrative here? Don't go see things that are affiliated with Zack Snyder. <laughs> Yo, see, I'm so glad we're having this conversation, y'all. See, we get into the nitty gritty over here, and I, I, I love it, right? Mm -hmm. Because that is a great question. Right? Like, why not Why not go see Henry Cavill's Superman? Yep. It's Zack Snyder's Superman. Mm -hmm. Why are we arguing over his haircut? <laughs> why are we arguing over his suit or a theme? It's Zack Snyder's Superman. Then I'm hearing, okay, well, I shouldn't go see The Flash because it, you know, it disrespects Zack Snyder. I'm like, yo, they literally, ha they literally have, like,
like a BVS type moment where you see where the flash was during Man of Steel. Like, and you're telling me that I shouldn't go see this? Yeah. Right? Like, it's Zach's actors. He cast them. You're telling me that I shouldn't go see this? But then you realize, right, if Black Adam would have made just a teensy bit more money, probably would have had to do the Black Adam versus Superman movie that we were going to have coming, right? If The Flash uh, just made a bit more money, probably would have had to do a Flash 2, which was going to have more bat in it, right? So at any point where there's been a time where uh, these films could... Uh, facilitate more Snyderverse actors appearing in, mm-hmm. in these movies. Aquaman 2 was supposed to have Batflick in it, mm-hmm. right? They snatched that out. Hey, it, if you're going to reboot and it's the end of the damn universe, why not just leave the Batflick thing in there? Why should it matter, right? But exactly. hey, at any time that there's been um, some you know, actual action to get Snyderverse actors, it's just been uh, a, a, a bit weird. And I would also add this, right? Uh, Any time that Warner Brothers has had a significant opportunity to be able to compete with the MCU, they punted the ball yeah. each and every single time. Each and every time, right? Um, In 2016 slash 2017, with uh, their casting choices and the directors that they were bringing in, they were poised to make a big splash. They had a lot of A-list talent in front of and behind the camera, yep. right? And you have the Josh's League uh, situation happen. They punted the ball on third down. <laughs> then you fast forward, and then now we're here, Black Adam, right? all this stuff is going on. The MCU is at a low point where it's like, hey, people are not really rocking with phase four. You know, here's another opportunity. Hey, Black Adam, you do a Black Adam 2, Black Adam versus Superman or what have you, right? Uh, Man of Steel 2, which they had the script for. Yeah. Right? Daniel Craig, Brainiac was supposed to happen. All that stuff. And they punted the ball on third down again. And it's just like, okay, like <laughs> every time that you have action to be able to compete, you just say no. And so it's like, all right, so, hey, let's get this thing over to Netflix where they know what to do with it. And I'm pretty sure Zach does too. And we'll just facilitate our end of this story that way. Absolutely. I think that's so funny. Uh, you brought up Black Adam. So, you look at um, kind of the narrative that surrounded Black Adam, and you've got the most, one of the, I guess, the most popular actor in the world in, you know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And he's like, no, dude, we're doing this with Henry Cavillers. And on one hand, they blame him for Shazam failing. And it's like, dude, well, Shazam 2, like, look at the script they had. Like, of course he doesn't want to be part of that. Um, I don't think him being in that was going to make the movie significantly better. And then on the flip side, the he went from being just the most charismatic, everybody liked him, to the number of articles I've read kind of blaming him for like he was bullying Warner Brothers. But I mean, he was right. He was objectively made the right decision. Like they should take that, you know, feedback and say, hey, this guy knows how to bring people to see movies. I think you, uh, in one of your interviews, mentioned that even Jungle Cruise's stuff is outperforming some of these uh you know, later DCEU uh, films, it's like, you know, the guy might know right. how to bring people to theaters. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the Rock, yo, it's funny because around that whole time, I was even having conversations with the homies. I was like, yo, why are they trying to make me hate The Rock? Yes. I was like, bro, like, I love The Rock. Everybody. Like, I love the rock my whole childhood. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we talking about? Like, this dude ain't done nothing but, you know, um, show that it's all about drive, all about power, right? No, nah, I'm just joking. But uh, you know, it's like, uh, he he has been this, um, this kind of staple of, like, hard work and determination and just trying to do the right thing. And uh, I think that when that whole stuff was going on, if you really look, it was immediately after Black Adam came out. They were immediately blaming him. Yes. They 
they had tried to say that he lied about the movie being profitable, which was absurd, right? Which was absurd. He even had to come out and pretty much break it down about how, like, you know, hey, about how it it really was. And so I think that when you have stuff like that going on, it's like, hey, they're blaming The, the Rock for, you know, this pocket of DC, and then they're blaming the Zack Snyder fans. They're blame. It's it's like blame is getting pushed in a lot of directions, away from where uh, I think it needed to be pointed at, which was uh, the studio failing uh, these, these these projects. Even with um, with Black Adam, lastly, I was like, hey, that movie didn't do that well. Why didn't you guys take it as a sign that hey? maybe this new marketing strategy that you guys had didn't work because yeah. they was like hey we're not going to spend that much money trying to market black adam and it's like okay well it didn't make that much so why wouldn't you take that as hey maybe we should just actually put more money into it next time and not try to only promote it on our own platforms that we own right which is what they yeah. had done so yeah which also brings up a really good point. Why do you think that a lot of people like to change the narrative or reimagine the past for the Snyders? Because we consistently hear that like Man of Steel or Zack Snyder's projects for the DCEU didn't make that much money, that they weren't profitable. But if you do any mm-hmm. type of research, they are profitable. And- well, and they very dishonestly include films long after Zack was gone like you have people blaming him for James Gunn's Suicide Squad. They're like, you know, like that was yeah. somehow, and it's like Zach left midway through the, you know, the Justice League. Yeah. So, <laughs> right, years before, right. So yeah, um, I think that when you look at some of these criticisms, um, you know, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier and why the narrative is so important. If you can repeat something enough times, people will just believe it, right? Um, in like 20, I think it was like 20, it might even been 2017, right? I was having a conversation with a coworker and she told me, this, this was probably like right after Aquaman. Mm-hmm. She told me how she hated all of the DC movies. And I was like, what do you mean? You, you hated them, like which one? She's like, ah. Uh, I just don't like them. I was like, so you didn't like Man of Steel? She was like, ah, oh, that one was cool. I was like, did you like BVS? And she was like, yeah, I like that one too. I was like, did did you like Wonder Woman? She, she was like, oh yeah, I really love that one. And my daughter loves it too. Did you like Aquaman? And she's like, yeah, that was pretty. I'm like, so what do you mean you don't <laughs> like the TV movies? Like, why did you just tell me? And, and she literally said, I don't know why I said that. Like, after having that, and I, I literally, movie by movie, I was like, yo, why did you just tell me that? You know what I mean? And she's like, I don't know. Like, you know, so, but I think it goes to show that narrative is very important. And if you can have people r- repeating it, just like the Snyder Cut isn't real, or Zack Snyder's fan base is toxic, <laughs> right? Or, you know, hey, Netflix isn't interested. Or Zach isn't interested. You know, it's just all these things, as long as you keep saying them, people will eventually believe it. It's, I love this uh, conversation because you're just calling it how it is. And uh, people, we posted the quote of Zach Snyder saying, I would absolutely do, like, continue the Snyderverse if Netflix bought it. Comment number one. He doesn't want to do it. He's moved on. Netflix isn't interested. <laughs> you guys need to move on too. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, dude, I'm like, this quote was from today. I'm like, did you even watch the video? Yeah. I'm like, that quote came, wait, the quote where Zach confirmed that he was interested came after Netflix confirmed that he was interested. I'm like, yo, what do you mean right now? It, it, look, I have been dealing with this since uh, April, since I asked him at Full Circle. People have been saying that he wasn't interested back then. I was just like, hey, man, like, you know, I literally asked him, and it's it, it's on camera. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, 
people, I feel like, just want to imagine what they want to believe. Well, and again, you know, we do a lot of uh, kind of theory and stuff, and we enjoy kind of playing with those ideas. And not to sound melodramatic, but I honestly do think this is about more than just whether or not a movie gets made, that there's something else involved with this, because... <laughs> My like with my business background, if it could make money, it will make money or it should make money. There's always an interested party. It's very weird when businesses choose to just turn down low hanging fruit, you know. Um, And when you hear this just reoccurring thing that, you know, the fan base is toxic, nobody wants it. And like you said, you run into those brick walls of, you know, we had somebody say it's like, you know, because we were talking about Henry Cavill potentially with the news that he might be in the MCU. And our thing is Henry Cavill has become this avatar for like standing by the fandom. He is respected in yeah. fan circles. First comment was like, why would that give people confidence? Everything in Superman was terrible. And it's like, dude, I think that's a pretty good <laughs> question. I don't think... And then also like, who... You know, I understand there's an affinity towards Christopher Reeve as Superman, you know, and it's because of the tragicness, you know, I remember, you know, that was obviously before our time, but you still watched it, same as like, you know, Michael Keaton's Batman, Absolutely. and you you kind of always will hold that fondly, but for me... Batman like, came out, I was two years old, man, that, that, that that's like, like one of the first films I remember watching. I remember like running around with a little blanket that I would like tuck into my shirt because I just thought Batman was the coolest. I tried to sleep upside down. I thought it was so cool, you know. <laughs> Dude, I had the little car that when connected to the thing and you had to run around the house and drive. It was like the big, huge car about this big, the Batmobile. I mean, I had all that stuff, man. I love Michael Keaton, Batman. I love Chris Marie, Superman. I love all that. I love the... The X Men movie from the from the two thousands. I love Tobey yeah. Maguire Spider Man. Yeah. I love Blade. I love all this stuff. It's like hey, hey, you know, yeah. it was just Zach stuff get a little bit different for me. And so, uh, but I'm just I'm so glad that we're having this conversation. I know I keep saying that, but <laughs> y'all get into the nitty gritty, and y'all have no idea how much I just uh, crave these real conversations, right? Because no, there is something more going on here uh, from the very beginning. My good friend Peely, uh, Mr. West Ashley, he told me he was like, "Hey man, th- this ain't about getting no movies, dog." Like he 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 said, reiterate that like all the time. He was probably, in my opinion, from the conversations that I've had, probably one of the most pivotal people in release the Snyder Cut, if not the most pivotal person, right? So. And he was like, yo, this ain't about no movies, dog. Like, I'm telling you, this is not about just getting some movies. And I, I used to always kind of keep that in the back of my head. But the further that we went, no, he's absolutely right. This is not just about getting movies. Because if it was just about the bottom line and dollars, we would have gotten this a long time ago. Um, I, I think that there's been a lot of egos involved and people that uh, are trying to keep history... Uh, being written a, a, a certain way, and they have uh, a vested interest in doing so. But I don't think that they're going to be successful. And uh, as long as we kind of keep to the course and keep doing what we're doing, I think that uh, our chances of being uh, uh, successful are very high. Yeah, I th- go ahead. No, I would say with that said, do you also think that's probably why we're getting some of these fans who come into comments because I feel like they realize once we got the Snyderverse, uh, Snyder Cut, yeah. yeah, the Snyder Cut at HBO, it was a huge moment and it meant something. And I feel like that has also facilitated people like in the need to like hate Zack Snyder. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, hey, hating Zack Snyder, um, it's like a multi-pronged thing. On one hand, it'll get you a whole lot of clicks, right? Because you have people that are that are going to support you because they're going to click on it and they hate Zack Snyder. Then you're going to have fans that click just to see what's being talked about, right? Um, and so, yo, it's like there's just this cycle of like, hey, uh, let's just hate on this guy. And I, I have met Zack a couple times now. He's literally like, the sweetest dude, man. Like, he's such a guy's guy. He's just cool. 
and so laid back and chill. And I, 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 I've had a couple conversations with him. He's a chill guy, man. And so to see all of this hate that gets stirred up, like in his name on line, it's pretty comical. But um, yeah, I don't think that all of the, the pushback is genuine. I think a lot of it is artificial and that uh, we're really not up against as many people as it may seem like we are. No, I, and I don't even think it's the people who actually hate Zack Snyder. I think they hate what he stands for because it's an even bigger idea that if fans come together and actually advocate for something, that it can be possible. And I feel like they hate the idea that he represents. Oh my, hey, I couldn't say it any better. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, these films, if you, you look at what Zack does, a lot of his films share a common theme of like a team coming together, usually a ragtag team from different backgrounds coming together to kind of fight a bigger, larger looming threat. And uh, that's kind of been what we've been experiencing while we've been uh, having this campaign going. And I think that uh, those themes resonate with a lot of people and um there's also not wanting people to be in the mood to come together right so it's like hey anything yeah. that is going to be pushing unity uh that's not in the interest of some people so you uh in one of your interviews i saw that you mentioned uh hearing hallelujah coming on the radio and obviously that's oh, a very significant oh, song. My Can you talk a little song. bit about that? Cause... Yeah, man. Like I, yeah, it came up on, cause um, I have like a playlist. It's like a four hour playlist. All I did random stuff. And I was driving and I was literally just, just kind of thinking about all this stuff and hallelujah came on. And I just had this moment and it was, it was, it was weird. Cause I even called, my good friend Leon right after I was like, yo, this cannot be the end. I was like, like, yo, it can't be like, it can't be the end. And that was really what started sparking my mind because I, I was thinking and what I came back to was, I was like, okay, outside of the fact that Warner brothers has for sure said that they're done. I was like, nothing's changed. Like, they still don't want to put the movie out, right? And we're still going to want it. So they've made it official now. But outside of, like, that, our situation as a fan base hadn't changed because they still didn't want to do it, right? So, uh, yeah, having Hallelujah come on at that time, I think it really just uh, sparked something in me. And I was just like, yo, this cannot be the end. It can't be. It's uh, it's funny you talk about so, you know, Warner Brothers saying they're out. Um, you know, I don't think they'll ever make it, so that's why we're all in on like, why wouldn't Netflix do it? But part of me has always wondered if maybe the reason they haven't sold it already is if bringing Snyder back is like their golden parachute if things go bad with this new DCU. Like, let's say mm-hmm. Superman Legacy, they find that they don't have the fan base that they thought they were going to bring over from Guardians of the Galaxy and it does just a modest box office that they don't just try and say, hey, look, these are those Elseworlds we're talking about, and you have this big show of, we still have the Snyderverse, and trying to bait fans to to Mm -hmm. maybe drag them along a little bit. Yeah. Um, Do you think there's anything to that? or? Yeah, my my only pushback to that would be this, right? Is that one, I think that um, the Superman legacy film and maybe one or two other things from this James Gunn regime is going to get made. So there will be projects, right? And also, I think that um, that Warner Brothers is also going to be sold. They are available to be bid on like in a couple months. And yeah, in April. Yeah. And so when I was kind of looking at the situation, I feel like that was just leaving too much in the air of like, hey, because like, look, we've already had Kevin Sujahara come and go. We had Toby Emmerich come and go. We had uh, now 
David Zaz off of them, right? And Sarn off of them. I mean, all these people have just come and go. And Zach hasn't been brought back yet, right? And so I'm like, hey, uh, I just didn't want to leave it up to asking another incoming company, like, hey, yeah. can, can you guys do this when then the actors might have aged out of the roles a little bit more. And uh, also, we had it on great authority that all of the cast was willing to come back now. So it was also in our favor that they were already willing to come back now. So it's like, if they were willing to come back now, right, and the fans want it now, let's just go ahead and get this done. And um, I think that uh, part of the reason why we haven't seen the Snyder cut on, cause uh, I want to reiterate this, right. Uh, we started this thing uh, early last year, right. And within one year, we got the entire DCEU on Netflix. Right. Um, I think that we also have rebel moon part two about to come out. And we also have yep. the director's cuts for those dropping in the summer. So I think that there's still a little bit of time left before um, I'm personally going to start saying, hey, like, what's going on? Uh, but I think that as of right now, we're just focusing on um, on making sure that we're hyping up sale, hyping up Rebel Moon as well, because those projects kind of like, um, they flow well with one another, right? It sale kind of pours into their it it pours into Rebel Moon and 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 Rebel Moon pours back into sale. Excuse me, but um, I think that as long as we're focusing on that, uh, we'll be just fine. And I I have a good inclination that Zack Snyder's Justice League will be on Netflix. Uh, sooner rather than later, I would say that. I don't think we're going to be campaigning too much longer before, uh, or, or I don't think it's going to be another year of us asking. I'll to just say that. Okay. So what, uh, you know, before we forget to ask this, we want to say, what can people who want to help show support? So how, like, obviously the hashtags, but there's more than one you were saying to use. Can you yeah. give us a breakdown of basically how you would see them using that to best effect in like what type of content to post to Twitter and. Absolutely. Uh, this has really been a multi-pronged thing, especially since uh, Full Circle, where we have the two hashtags, uh, the first hashtag, which was sell ZSJL to Netflix, which is uh, the prospect of us getting Zack Snyder's Justice League on to Netflix. Then you have sell Snyderverse to Netflix, which means the rest of everything else, right? Like, hey, the air cut, uh, Man of Steel 2, right? Whatever you want, you can throw it in there. The Bat Flag movie, right? Whatever you want is all encompassed in that second hashtag. So we ask that anybody that's posting to Twitter, if you can follow those three rules of engagement, of being positive, not mixing those hashtags with others, and also not tagging or mentioning anybody over at WBD. And you can, you know, post yeah. theories, speculations, pictures, videos, whatever. Like, we do not mind. Um, but also uh, what we do to make sure that we are also driving the conversation for it in a very effective way is that uh, we coordinate watch-alongs for all types of different stuff on Netflix in the name of like Zack Snyder's cell movement. So uh, we we pretty much uh, do a whole bunch of watch alongs and we actually watch the projects on Netflix. And um, yo, we've had great success doing that. We've gotten several shows to trend. We have gotten in actual engagement from uh, the uh, verified accounts of some of these shows like uh, Blood of Zeus, right? When we were doing a watch along for that, they showed us love. Um, when we were doing um, the watch along for the Power Ranger special, we got the Black Ranger that showed us some love on Twitter and Instagram, <laughs> right? So, uh, and just 
recently, this last Saturday, as we were finishing up Blue Eye Samurai, we got it to trend on Netflix, right? So, uh, yeah, we do watch alongs every Saturday morning called Cartoons and the Serial, where we get up early and we watch something on Netflix and we're all hanging out. And so just making sure that you aren't just hashtagging. Uh, we also want people watching things on the app and watching Zach's project, watching some of this stuff and um, really just making sure that we're carrying forward the conversation and pushing engagement rather than just tweets on um, Twitter or slash X. Absolutely. Um, I want to get on to like, how did you feel about Blue Eyed Samurai in a second? But uh, oh God. for, oh, woo. it's good, huh? Yo. Wow. Uh, we, um, we watch a lot of stuff. Just real quick. We watch a lot of stuff on cartoons and serial because I think that, 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 like, that this is the 12th thing that we have watched. This is my favorite out of the new things I've seen, like easily. Blue Eyed Samurai was incredible. Netflix is killing the game when it comes to animation. Uh, mm -hmm. And that has to be stated. I just had to add that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it can be such a negative space because kind of like you touched on, people can feel like this isn't going to happen. Um, in addition to yourself, you know, who can people follow that you think are like good voices on Twitter and X to kind of surround themselves with more voices that feel the same so that if they don't know already, like, you know, some of the leaders in this uh, moving along with yourself. Oh, absolutely. We have um, Leon of the New Geeks, right? He's been my right hand throughout this entire thing. Uh, there is a there is a uh, sales ZSJL to Netflix hub account that you guys can follow. Uh, also, there's people like A Pass 97, Mama Bear, Art Doll. I mean, we just have so many people that have been pouring into this. So all kind of other members from the cool table, they've really been the ones that have really been helping me along with Leon, like kind of bring this thing to fruition. Um, these t-shirts, right? This is a sales ZSJL uh, actual t-shirt uh, that we've done. Oh. We've done multiple runs. We actually have one on Ink to the People right now at inktothepeople.com slash sales ZSJL. We have a Zack Snyder sale movement shirt. Um, we've had, this is like the third bundle of shirts that we've done. So um, awesome. we've been trying to raise money for AFSP. Uh, so yeah, the, the Good Austin, L Necron, Mama Bear, Art Doll, A Pass 97, uh, Rock Talks uh, has been doing a, a bunch of the uh, online uh, promotional posters for us. Um, it's just, it's really been a bunch of people like just pouring into this thing from all around the globe and we wouldn't be here without all of their efforts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, one of the things that I've been kind of seeing the past couple of days that has been very strange is what I would see is like almost like an escalation of budgets. I don't know if you saw the new, uh, budget was released for Joker 2. Mm-hmm. And it's like two hundred million dollars mm -hmm. on a film that made over a billion with sixty with a sixty million dollar budget. I've seen that. I saw um, news come out that the tax credit for uh, Superman Legacy was like eleven million. Which, if you kind of do the math on a thirty percent um, tax, tax credit, means that it makes it sound like the budget was kind of small. Um, there was the news that came out that they didn't want to continue Superman and Lois because they were viewing that as potentially being competition. Now, that did come from the, the lead actor. I think his name is Taylor Hoshul or whatever. As well as the CW. Yeah. Sucks. And then uh, there was something else. Like, what is what do you think is kind of going on at Warner Brothers right now? Oh, and then uh, James Gunn said he didn't want to produce any projects that he hasn't written himself. Including the shooting down of a Batman Beyond uh, animated series. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Um, I, I think that with... A lot of these things that have been taking place recently, I think there's been a shuffling of um, things that, you know, they're doing over at Warner Brothers. I think that them investing so much money in Joker means that they're probably trying to double down on something that they feel worked that first time. I'm not sure what could have ballooned the budget up that much, right? Uh, but 
I guess we'll have to wait and actually see the movie. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I was a bit kind of confused on that too. Um, as for some of these other things, uh, as for the Superman the production budget, I'm not shocked. I feel that uh, that budget was probably going to be pretty small because they want to guarantee that that film is going to make money. And I think that if you look at how these films have been performing, I, I think if you look at the way that Superman Legacy has been trending on Twitter um, slash X, um, like our hashtags have been out trending them um, at several times. I noticed that. Yeah, at several times um, when there's been literal announcements. They've made announcements on our trending day and, and it still didn't make a dent. So um, I'm not shocked that they're probably trying to reconfigure some numbers and try to uh, make sure that, you know, that film turns a profit no matter what. The uh, Oh, and one more thing. Does. That's probably why you got Sean Gunn playing so many roles, too. Because he's, like, all over <laughs> playing, like, five roles. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, we're going to work this with the home, awesome. boy. <laughs> <laughs> You get the feeling that Sean Gunn works for like a Sunday dinner with the family, you know? Right. Hey, they, that bro, is just... You're going to be in everything. <laughs> hey, we got to cut corners. Honestly, yeah. no, that's honestly, a joke that we love to make. And, yeah, uh, yeah. We, I was shocked. His, I didn't see his wife in any of the cast. Right. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> um, I think it's, I really do think that what's going on a little bit with the media response to Superman Legacy is a little bit artificial because I've seen the most ridiculous headlines. Like, I don't know if you saw it, um, the that David Cornsweet, the guy who's been cast as the new Superman, that he couldn't fit into uh, Henry Cavill's suit because he's too tall. And if, <laughs> exactly. Um, and how he fits just right in Christopher Reeves' suit. And I was like, dude, like... I get that you guys want this to be successful. Um, it kind of goes into like our little bit of a theory that they don't, you know, they don't want the Snyderverse to ever, you know, be viewed as a success. But even uh, we, we kind of jokingly call it, you know, from a place of love that they're trying to not create like the DCU, but the DCCW, because <laughs> there are an enormous amount of actors who, and we, we we're pretty in the know when it comes to like movies and shows that we're having to Google, be like, who is this person? And then you'll see a screen ran article, be like, oh my God, I can't believe they got, looks down at paper, David Corrin sweat. <laughs> and I'm like, who's David Corrin sweat? <laughs> and then these like, and then on Twitter, people were just saying, oh my God, it's the most perfect casting I've ever seen. And I'm like, really? Compared to Man of Steel, <laughs> the cast for Man of Steel was yeah. stacked. Right. Nah, Zach's casting skills are like out of this world. I was just, I was just going back. The first time I ever saw Oscar Isaac in a film was in Sucker Punch, right? Like, yeah. you know, like I was so upset when I first heard that Gal Gadot was cast as Wonder Woman. I was like, ah, the skinny chick from Fast and Furious, the Wonder Woman. I was like, man, that's not what? I was like, nah, man, she way too thin. Like, yo, I was hot, right? I I saw that first picture. I was like, all right. You got me. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah. Yeah. Wonder Woman right there, right? When you see Cavill in, in the studio, he's like, yo, that's Superman right there. When I saw Ben Affleck, I was a little iffy on Ben Affleck, right? Yeah. I saw that first picture. I was like, damn, that's Batman right there, right? So, ah, uh, man, Zach is like the go that casting. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, he, he's my favorite director for a reason. I don't lie or try to cover that up you know what i'm saying but uh no nah, um i really do think that it is a case where they've been trying to market this movie they've been having an incredibly hard time doing so um james gunn at several points has kind of made it uh his job to go out of his way to uh bite back at the fans or to try to uh discredit scoops or just all these things that I think it's above uh, a DC studio head's job to be, you know, they really shouldn't be having to do those type of things. So I, I think that when you look at how he has kind of behaved towards some of the fans, um, James Gunn liked a tweet saying he didn't like me. 
from his verified account. Like this is a this is a true story. Like <laughs> in our community, we all kind of joke about it, and there's this like little thing of like, hey, he 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 should have never liked that tweet. But no, he did. Like he was literally like gone at fans, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And we've made it clear that we think James Gunn's on social media way too much. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, right? No, like, no, like, I'm, I, I mean, look, like, this is, this is like real spill. Like, him and I were tagged, weren't tagged in a tweet. The tweet said, you know, something to the effect of, this is why people like James Gunn don't F with people like Skywalker and the cool table. And he liked it from his verified account. And I was like, yo, this is, this is wild. This is like back around the Black Adam days, right? So I've known since back then. I was like, yo, man, this dude is on social media like way too much, <laughs> yeah. right? But um, so when you have the, the actual studio co-head antagonizing fans, that doesn't help. Right. And I think that, you know, him being caught in all these lies and stuff about what was going to be in the movie and what wasn't and just all these things. And him saying that Ben Affleck was going to be one of the architects of the DCU. Yep. <laughs> and but Ben said, absolutely <laughs> not. You know what I mean? He's like, absolutely not. And I actually heard a story about why he said no. Uh, it was because he heard what the plans were. And he was like, Absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, 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 no. Right. So um I I just think that when you have these things happening, it has been incredibly hard for them to get people excited for these movies. And so they're having to go to alternative means. I think you're right. Um, you know, the thing that came out from, you know, we're big fans of Across the Spider-Verse, we thought it was great. And uh, we're actually watching that on Cartoons and Serial on Netflix tomorrow morning. Dude, Isn't that such a funny story? There we go. You're there going you to go. enjoy it so, so much. It's yeah. amazing. Well, uh, oh, no. I've seen it. It's fire. Yeah. The, the ending pissed me off. I'm sorry. I was so <laughs> mad. I was so mad. So I, was so, I. I was like, oh. yo, I, I literally yelled out in the theater, are you serious? I was like, is you going to end this movie right now? No, I seriously looked at my phone because I was like, wait. There's so there's only like 10, 15 minutes left. And I turned to Andy and I was like, how are they gonna wrap this up in like 10, 15 minutes? Yeah. No, I was doing the same thing. It was like they're all going off and go fight this one fight and he's over here. I was yeah. like, wait a minute, what the hell? Isn't this at the end of the movie? I was like, yes. and I was like, oh no, they bet not. And <laughs> they did. And I was like, oh, are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be two years for the end. <laughs> but I think it's a, I think it's a, like it's amazing. It's just like a triumph of uh, like that style. Like and that you look at what's yeah. going on with animation right now, like from Netflix. I think we're definitely coming into like a new dawn on animation. But then when I heard that, you know, there was this interest to have Batman Beyond, which was one of my favorite shows, be adapted by those people. You're like, oh, that's a home run. Like, yeah, absolutely. Right. And James Gunn's like, we just can't possibly do it. And I'm like. Dude, you're making creature commandos. You're telling me you don't think Batman Beyond, made by the people that made across the Spider Verse, would do better than Creature Commandos or Waller? They're making a Waller hey. show. Hey, how do you want better, Andy? If the Flash would have done better, we probably would have got a Batman Beyond movie. Yeah. Right. Man. That was something else. See, like, see, and I, I was trying to warn people. I, I was like, hey, man, there's so much writing on these films, guys. I was like, it's more than just the Snyderverse. Cause I would, cause I was like, hey, like Michael Keaton as an older Batman in Batman Beyond is like the easiest layup in all of Hollywood. Yeah. Like, yo, it's 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 the easiest layup. Like, right, like he played Batman in 89, you bring him back. Hey, have him start the movie as Batman. Hey, I'm too old for this shit. And then all of a sudden he has to go find it's Terry McGinnis. Yeah. Right? It's it's is, you know, hey, bring Tim Burton back, do it in the style of Burton or whatever, right? Just just get the movie made. Yeah. That we really could have had that, but yet you have people that was boycotting the flash and like, no, don't go see it. And I was like, hey guys, but y'all y'all don't want Batman Beyond? It's like it don't matter. I'm like, oh shit. Okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> maybe you can uh, maybe you can shed some light on uh, you know there's like different rumors that we hear that you know kind of circulate and one of the rumors that you probably you know something you know more inside on was that he was brought back to do a Batman Beyond film and that they kind of saddled him with making the Batwoman film and then they shelved that and that James Gunn didn't even want him to be in that's what I'm um, saying. In the, the Flash, Flash because, because James Gunn, you know, has all these tweets talking about how much he hates, you know, Michael Keaton's, Michael Batman. Keaton's Batman, and that it was almost just like destined to be blown up from the start. Yeah. Um. You, uh. Look, I found that James Gunn's involvement and the knowledge that he was probably going to be head of DC Studios was it went back a lot further than I had earlier anticipated i've been hearing rumors that he's been he's been kind of involved with them since 2011 oh wow wow right um i yes um and it it wouldn't shock me my friend leon he's told this story here so i'm sure he wouldn't mind me kind of sharing it but um the like he was privy to conversations about jeff john's trying to sabotage Zach's Man of Steel movie before Man of Steel came out. Oh, damn. So, no, no, no. This, no, this whole, like, copying of Marvel, bringing in Marvel directors like Joss Whedon, James Gunn, this has been planned for, like, quite some time. Um, this is something that I have I, that, that I've spoken about ad nauseum. I think that they've been slowly marching us towards this DC versus Marvel crossover mm -hmm. that nobody seems to be interested in other outside of these two companies, right? Because <laughs> yeah. Marvel fans don't want it. DC fans don't want it for the most part, right? But yet it seems to just be this slow march to getting us to this crossover. You, you can even look no further than the James Gunn's comments who, who said, hey, it's probably more likely now that I'm in charge, you know, right after he got the job, right? So uh, I think that, you, you know, um, I actually interviewed Will Rollins, who was an actor who was on the set of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. He told this story on my channel that he saw Gotham City police trucks on a Doctor Strange 2 set, right? So, this, so, so it's like, why, you know, They've been slowly kind of planning this thing for quite some time. And I and I think that when you look at all of the moves that have been made um, since Zach has kind of been ousted, uh, it's been kind of clear that they're slowly trying to get us into like a Marvel light kind of DC universe. It, because that's the only way that the crossover can happen. Yeah. Like if, if you have Zach there, I think that those two tones don't really mix. No, they don't. But if you bring in a James Gunn, you know, and you do a version of Justice League a la The Suicide Squad, you could probably get that to cross over, right? But, uh, yeah. you know, certainly not Batflick. Which, <laughs> which definitely yeah. makes sense for, I mean, if you're running a company, there's no way if you're trying to run it to make money, you think making two separate Suicide Squad films before you get a Aquaman 2 or a, a, a Man of Steel 2 makes any type of sense. Especially the first Or a one. Birds of Prey. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forget, I forget about Birds of Prey. I, <laughs> I try to forget. Um, right? Birds of Prey. Something you Absolutely. said uh, that I can't get out of my head was that they always kind of, you know, punt on third down, and it's like, that is so true. You have Wonder Woman. I, like, everybody liked Wonder Woman. Then they make Wonder Woman 1984. And it's like, what mm -hmm. is that? You know? Right? Yo, look, once again, my mom, huge Wonder Woman. She, man, my mom loved Linda Carter. Mm -hmm. Right? But she she said, yo, that got the best Wonder Woman. She literally said that. Right? She loved that first Wonder Woman movie. She, she couldn't stand the second one. She was literally saying, like, where's her sword? Where's her shield? Like, where was all that stuff? Like, why is Steve Trevor back? Right? Like, why is she losing a fight to win? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, at the end of the film. Right? Yeah. It was just, it was just so many things, man. 
in Austin. It was a movie in the 1980s with no 80s music. Yeah. I'm sorry. They just had no 80s music whatsoever. And it's like, we actually watched it after it was on Netflix. And yeah, it's just several puzzling decisions in these films. Yeah. The uh, One of the other uh, things that I want to ask your opinion on is, so like one of the, what I feel is the laziest um, criticism of Zack Snyder is he doesn't have color in his films. And for instance, I posted something because it was like, dude, does that, so does a lack of color make a movie bad? Like a stylistic choice? Not that I agree with it, but does that mean that, uh, what's it called? Sin, Sin City's, City's trash because it's mostly black and white? You know, is Schindler's List or, bad? Or, I, I was just going to say Schindler's yeah. List. <laughs> I, it, exactly. Right? I believe it. Yo, and what's funny is they always use the one scene from Man of Steel with Cavill and Lois Lane in the interrogation room. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm like, I've literally been in the military. That's what those rooms are supposed to look like. Like, like, like it's a, like it dulls all the color in the room, right? So outside of that one scene, that's literally the only look. Next time that you look, I'm I promise you. They always use that scene of them in the yeah. interrogation room. And it's like, that's the only thing that you guys can ever use. And to act like Man of Steel or BDS doesn't have colors is just absurd. Like, there are, uh, most of those films, every frame can almost be like a painting anyway. Yeah. Does the Krypton sequences not have color? Right, like, yeah. oh my God! Um, in like, BBS, across Africa, and he's swooping across <laughs> Africa. And it's like, oh, just no. It's like it's full of color. <laughs> Absolutely right. So yeah, man. Um, uh, it's just all of these things are kind of artificial, and when you look at them on their face, they can usually be debunked pretty quickly. Yeah. One of uh, I'll try and phrase this for Katie because she gets a little bit worked up. <laughs> so. We're big Henry Cavill fans. Um, have you noticed, we, we feel that there's like an attempt to just tear down Henry Cavill in everything he does. Um, so it's, it's kind of like a two-parter. For instance, the most recent and ridiculous one was Argyle comes out. Now, they're trying to say <laughs> the failure of Argyle proves that he's not a box office draw. Well, the guy's in it only seven minutes. I would argue the fact that he's front and center in the marketing proves that they know he's a box office draw and gave deep but so this weird narrative about him not being bankable do you think that is hating him that seeped into Zack Snyder's work or do you think it is fallout from Zack Snyder creeping into his perception oh no um I absolutely think that it's the latter the Argyle thing was very was very funny because I knew he wasn't in that movie. Mm -hmm. I I haven't seen it. I I I literally did this on a, on a live stream. I was like, hey guys, in the trailer, they they pretty much let you know that he's not Argyle. Because at first it's pretty much making it seem like he is. Then there's this scene where they go, okay, well let me introduce you to the real Agent Argyle. Yeah. And then everybody's like, oh, oh. and then they're using this tagline, don't let the cat out of the bag. I'm like, yo, Henry Cavill is barely in this movie. Yeah. I, I, I knew it, and I asked people on the I was like, hey, is this what happens? And it was like, yes, that's exactly what happens. And I was like, yo, I knew that he wasn't in that film for uh, for that long, and I think that the fact that they tried to use that is just absurd. I, I think that this comes from hatred of Zack Snyder. Um, Henry Cavill is Zack Snyder's suit. They know the the DCEU started with Henry. Mm -hmm. And how did they apparently end it? They ended it by firing him. Yep. Right? So they know that as Cavill goes in DC, Zack goes, right? Because that's his Superman. Mm -hmm. Zack said, that's my Superman past, present, and future. And so attacking Henry and all of what he is, that is really in my belief, just byproduct of people not liking Zack Snyder and them seeing him as kind of like 
the symbol mm. of the of the Zack Snyder DC films. Yeah. The do you remember there were those rumors that Gal Gadot was coming back in James Gunn's universe? Oh, I do that. I this. Um, oh yeah. And so, what do you make of that? Do you think that there was, but then the because the immediate narrative was, well, if she's coming back, and if Jason Momoa might be coming back, and if the Flash might be coming back, and people were like, so. Henry Cavill might be coming back, and he's like, absolutely. Do you think that that was? What do you think of that? I mean, that debacle and what happened with yeah her being crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I think that um, if you really look at what happened with all of the prominent Justice League members, right, it was almost like they were trying to slowly, like, let the fan base know, or like they didn't really want to just come out and tell everybody, hey, they're all gone. Yeah. So it was almost like it was a, hey, Cavill's gone, but Ben's going to stay and Ben's going to work on something for us, guys. Right? Like, Ben's going to work in the DCU, mm-hmm. right? Gal Gadot's going to come back. We can do a Wonder Woman 3, right? It's just Cavill. Yeah. Then it's like, oh, well, Ben says absolutely not. Then it's like, ah. Oh, well, look, Ben's not, but Gal's still going to come back, right? Gal's still going to come back. We still got Jason, right? They would even say, hey, Ezra Miller, right? If yeah. the Flash does well, he might even be back, right? And it was like, yo, like, but one by one, we saw that that was not the case. So I think that uh, what we had was they didn't want to just come out and let the fan base know that, hey, this shit is over. They're all gone, right? It was like, no hey, we can kind of placate them and, you know, hey, uh, we're going to slowly let them know. But I think that it backfired and it and it just created a bunch more chaos and it kind of forced them to have to come out and say, hey, well, actually, Gal Gadot's not going to be back. She had even said that she was told that she was going to be back, mm-hmm. right? And so I'm like, yo, so now y'all calling Gal Gadot a liar? Like, I doubt Gal Gadot's lying, you know what I'm saying? Like I, you know, it's just it's just very strange indeed. Uh, but I think that in hindsight, they should have just kind of told everybody from the very jump what it actually was from the beginning. Absolutely. Um, what other stuff are you uh, like? I guess would you think is crucial for people to know what about what's going on right now in the movie that maybe we've missed? Man, um, look. To just know that uh, you guys aren't alone, right? I know it. a lot of times the Zack Snyder fan base can kind of feel isolated and it's been hard for us to kind of find each other sometimes, right? Especially the ones that are about being effective, right? So um, if you are a Zack Snyder fan and you are wanting a conclusion to these stories, um, just know that you are not alone in wanting a conclusion for these stories and that there are other people out there that are fighting and trying to be effective and really get this thing done in like an adult responsible manner. We're not trying to waste anybody's time, right? We're really trying to be the most effective that we can be. And we just feel that um, continuing to drive engagement on Twitter while also at the same time engaging with Netflix directly and having that kind of uh, two-pronged conversation with them. Um, It's been going fantastic and anybody that would love to be on board, uh, we only ask that you guys just follow the ROEs and just engage with Netflix. That's it. Right? Just, um, Just keep this fight going like the movies uh, or actually dislike them. Just be honest, right? Just watch them and give your honest opinion. Do you like it, love it, or hate it? Right? Uh, That is all that we ask, and um, we're just really trying to get this thing done in the most effective way possible. I keep coming back to that word, but it is very important for us to be the most effective that we can be. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's a perfect way of putting it because whether or not you like the Snyderverse or not, it's really about just having more projects that are DC and Elseworlds and more things for the fan base to watch and enjoy and then discuss. Right? Yeah, I mean, look, if they give me my, look, if they announced, 
Is ZSJL2 is going to be done and we're going to get a conclusion? I'll buy a ticket to Superman Legacy. I've been telling people that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, hey, unless I get my ZSJL, yeah. <laughs> Well, and we've never seen the Dark Side Saga. Like, how are they, like, just the way, right. uh, I mean, just to see Dark Side versus right. Superman. Come on. Bro, Dark Side said, ready the armada. We will use the old ways. Right? Exactly. Which knows, which we know means he's pulling up. He's pulling up and he's jumping off the ship first before everybody else. You know what I'm saying? He's jumping off the yeah. ship by himself. Who don't want to see that? Who don't want to see it? Like, it's crazy. Yeah, Dude, I want to see Zack Snyder's take on the Omega Beams, man. Like, come on. Right? Y'all saw when um he got Aquaman and um and uh, Volko, how it spelled out, end? That was crazy. Yep. Can you imagine if Batfleck dodges an Omega Beam? Right, like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, 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 there's all these moments that that Zach know. Zach know what he's doing. And we probably gonna get him, but we just gotta get these films out. Yeah, <laughs> I saw the. Uh, I think it was your friend. Um, her Twitter handle Sammy something. I'm getting her name. Snyder Queen. Snyder Queen. I think reposted a picture of the costumes from the Snyderverse and just how detailed they were. Man, like, dude, Zach Snyder loves this stuff. Like he spared no you, you, effort in getting this stuff right. Yeah, I I I would definitely say that uh Zach's entire team, man, they they know what they've been doing. Um they've been, you know, when I got to meet um some at full circle, everybody was just so passionate, man, from Patrick to Topolis to DJ. Uh, to er just everybody that uh, was part of his team, Chris Terrio, they were so like engaged and excited about these projects, and none of them sounded like they wanted it to end. None of them did, right? Chris Terrio, I mean, everybody was giving hints and nods to the future, and you know, I don't know, right? You know, who knows? Right, and, and I'm like, come on, man! Like, you know that they yeah, like, like, you know, they <laughs> want to finish this thing. We want it, and I just think that uh, it is very important that uh, this thing happens just for all parties. Yeah, definitely. Good. All right. Um, is there anything else you want to make sure people know before we end this little interview conversation? <laughs> Just first and foremost, thank you guys for having me. It was an absolute blast. Told you guys that it was going to be dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was going to yeah. be a dope conversation. But, no, uh, this really was amazing. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I'm just, I'm just very happy to be here and continuing to have these conversations and just know that, uh, yo, uh, sales ESJL, sales Snyderverse, uh, Zack Snyder sales movement, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we are marching forward and we are continuing to be effective while we do it and just know that uh, it's just pure passion, effort, and love that goes into this thing. And we only ask that everybody contribute whatever they can. Whatever you can contribute, it's more than enough. You know what I'm saying? If it's just a tweet, if it's just, hey, you watching a project that's actually on Netflix, whatever it is, it is more than enough. And we are very grateful for it. Absolutely. Yeah. And you guys, you're not alone. And this is inevitable. So you know you want to join now and be a part of the movement. Yep. All right. And we'll catch you guys in the comments. Bye. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs>